Good morning. It is Friday morning. And we are packing up to go do some winter camping. I'm taking a final load out to the trailer. Gonna get hitched up and then we're gonna go camping. Uh, temperatures are not too bad. They're definitely better than what we originally thought when we booked this. At one point, they were talking about negative numbers. I'm going to swing around here. See if you can see my friends in the background there. Did they, did they leave? No, they're back there. So, now temperatures are at least not in the single digits, which is good. So, let me throw this stuff in. We're going to get hitched up, and we're going to head out. So I only had one thing to do before we leave here, and that is to get my Anderson bucket that I use on the tongue and frozen. I even tried shoveling it. I think I have a solution. That's the way to do it. And we even got marks to remember the story. Let's talk winter camping. Now, up until just a couple of years ago, we were your typical Midwestern RVer. We would use our camper from about mid-April till mid-October. We'd winterize it, we'd put it away, forget about it until the next April when we would de-winterize it. But a couple of winters ago, we decided to try camping in the winter months because quite frankly, you spend big bucks on these RVs and only get to use them six months out of the year. And you know, it's just depressing here in the Midwest sometimes in the winter months. So, can you RV in the winter? And the answer is, most likely. So how do you RV in the winter? Well, you know, there's different ways you can do it. So let's start with probably the most obvious way, and that's to stay at an RV park like we're staying at right now. We're here in Mount Eaton, Ohio at the Evergreen RV Resort. And this is a full hookup resort, and they have this gorgeous shower house where you have restrooms, you have hot water, really nice showers. They even have an indoor pool and hot tub that you can use during your stay. So if you wanna take your RV out in the winter and you don't want 
want to mess with dewinterizing, come to a place like Evergreen because all you really have to do is open up your camper, turn the heat on, we're plugged into electric so we're running both the propane and we're running a little electric heater to keep us warm and if you don't want to dewinterize your water systems, we just walk across the street to the bathhouse where we can take our showers, use the restroom, that type of thing. Now maybe you're like, hey, I really don't want to get up in the middle of the night to go use the restroom. Well, we don't either. And so what we do in cases like that to where we don't want to dewinterize our system is we will go ahead and use the toilet. We just bring some jug water to flush with. And then before we leave, I go ahead, open up the sewer hose and dump the valve. Now, be careful with that because we are in this 2020 Lance model number 1985, which is a true four season camper, which means not only do we have an enclosed underbelly, there are heat ducts down there to keep heat and even the valves for our tanks are up in there where they're heated. If you don't have an enclosed underbelly or your valves are outside and it's super cold out, even those valves potentially could freeze and then you may not be able to empty that black tank. So a lot of how you winter camp is going to depend on the type of trailer you own. But let's say you don't have a four season camper and your underbelly is not enclosed, things like that. Again, find an RV park that has a really nice shower house that's open in the winter and you can go and you'll never have to mess with your water systems. Another way to use your camper in the winter though is maybe you don't want to come to a park that has all the amenities and you want to go to maybe a state park or um, national forest land, something like that that's still available and open. Then in that case, when we do that sometimes, we will actually go ahead and dewinterize the system. Now, in that case, I'll go ahead and put fresh water in before we leave because many times even the state parks may not have their fresh water supply on when you get there. Um, we'll go ahead and flush out the pink, use the trailer, and then when we get ready to leave, I'm gonna go to a dump station. I'm gonna dump all my tanks. I'm gonna empty my fresh water tank and I'm just gonna winterize again. Now you may say, wow, isn't that a real pain and costly to do that? First of all, with our Lance, two gallons of antifreeze will winterize the entire system. And so we're only looking at less than $10 each time we winterize. And honestly, Lance makes it so simple as far as the actual winterization process, I can do it in less than 15 minutes. So sometimes we just like to head to a state park, spend the weekend and go ahead and use that fresh water system. We're just going to dewinterize and rewinterize before we take it back home again. Now, even if you want to go to a state park that doesn't have shower houses and things like that, you could still use your camper. Again, probably could use your toilet by using jug water and then maybe use things like baby wipes if you can get by for a day or two without actually taking a shower and just do kind of a wipe down bath until you get home. It really just all depends on what level of comfort you want when you're out camping. For us, it's really not so much about the comfort, it's just getting out when this wonderful winter crisp air with the snow on the ground. Um, we were at a state park about three weeks ago. We were the only ones there. We had the entire campground to ourselves. We woke up to a light snowfall, there was fog, it was almost magical. So we're willing to give up some of the comforts of a normal camping trip for so much more of just being out in winter and getting to use our trailer. So a lot of it's just gonna depend on you and what you wanna do. But the key is to know, yes, if you want to use your RV in the winter, most likely you can. It just depends on how you want to do it and is your trailer equipped for true four season camping. Now, if you're at an RV park and they do have their water turned on, I recommend not leaving your hose hooked up because overnight, not only can their pipe freeze, but then your hose is going to potentially freeze. So even if you're here at like, let's say Evergreen, like we are, what I did when we arrived, I went ahead, hooked up my hose, filled up my fresh water tank, then when it was full, I put my hose, unconnected it, put it away, and that way we don't have to worry about their line freezing up or our line freezing up. So even if you have it, I would still recommend putting water in your fresh tank if you're gonna win or unwinterize your system. Now that the weekend's over, it's time to go ahead and get the trailer ready to take home and let it set for a few more weeks until we go out winter camping again. Very similar to when we do it in the summer, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to dump my black tank first. And then after that's done, if I have used the water systems with the gray tank, then I'll go ahead and I'll dump my gray tank next. Next, I'm gonna drain all the fresh water out of the fresh water tank. 
next I'm going to do my low point drains. Low point drains will be located at different places on different trailers. And don't forget to go inside and open up valves to release the pressure so more of that water comes out of your system. Next, we're onto the water heater. We're gonna drain that. Now, the main thing with the water heater is make sure you've let the water cool down because otherwise you could end up burning yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. I always carry the appropriate size tool to remove the plug. If you can never remember what size socket you need for your water heater plug, go ahead and put the one you need in upside down. That way, if you don't use this larger size kit ever, when it is time to empty your water heater, the, uh, the socket that's upside down is the one you're gonna need. And then I'm gonna open the pressure relief valve to let the water flow out. All right, now that I've went ahead and emptied my water heater, my low point drains, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the plugs. And now we can go ahead and we can run our pink fluid through. Now I'm not gonna show you that because I've already done a special video where I ran antifreeze through our entire water system in under 15 minutes. And I'm gonna link that video at the end of this video for you if you wanna check that out. There you go, that's how easy it is to go ahead and take our trailer from winterized to dewinterized, have a wonderful weekend out here winter camping, and then get it rewinterized to take back home and put away till the next time we go out. Do you like to go winter camping? Have you ever camped in the winter? Let me know down below in the comments. And until next time, everyone, we'll see you on down the road. Good night.